we celebrate communion once a month here, and I love the opportunity we have to celebrate communion. Because um, communion, as I look at it, as I see in Scripture, it is, it is a physical thing for physical people, right? Like we can see it, we can taste it, we can eat it, right? We're physical, we have a body, right? It's a physical thing for physical people to point us to a spiritual reality. And what is that? It's that God himself became flesh. Like he took on flesh, okay? Like this, this piece of bread we had. God the Spirit, right? Became somebody we can see, we can experience. But not just that, but he died on the cross for you and for me. And like that song said, he, he bore the full wrath of God. All of the punishment for your sin, my sin, was put on him, and he died for you and for me. His body was broken. His blood was shed. God died to rescue you and me. And when we take communion together, there's a couple things that I think are important for us to do as we look at, at Scripture. One is we examine ourselves. This is a time when we open our heart before God. Hebrews says that the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword and it pierces and, and divides and it shows our intentions and we're laid bare before the one that we have to give an account to. And that is sobering. It's a time for us to do that. And while we do that, to remember that the very next verse of Hebrews says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest, Jesus Christ, the Son of God who's gone before us, let us approach the throne of grace that we might receive mercy and grace to find help in the time of need. So we take a moment, let's take a moment now to just open our hearts before God. There's nothing we can hide from Him. We don't have to hide anything from Him. When we recognize our brokenness and our frailty and our sin, we ask for Him to show us the ways that He wants us to intentionally grow. And we remember that in the midst of that soberness of God knows everything about you and me. He leads us to Jesus who washed our sin away. We can come boldly now to the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace to find help in the time of need. So let's take the, the bread out together. And Jesus, I thank you that you died for a sinner like me. And that because of your death, your grace can be poured out on one like me who only deserves severity. We remember your death and we proclaim your death and your resurrection until the day that you come. Let's partake together. As we prepare to take the cup together. Jesus, we remember that you said, this cup is the cup of the new covenant. It's my blood, which is poured out for many. And you said that you won't drink it again until the day that you drink it together with your people in heaven. And so we proclaim your death and your resurrection and the finished work you accomplished. We proclaim it now, today, until the day that you return. Let's take together. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. May we remember, just like physical food nourishes our physical body, your death is what gives us nourishment spiritually, your resurrection, your spirit, Christ in us, the hope of glory. We love you and we worship you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen.